P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's round up time on the double R bar. So saddle your hearts, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills, the wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. All set for a good breakfast in the morning, buckaroos? You are if Mom keeps that post cereal shelf filled because there's nothing like post cereals to start the day off right. You know, you can always count on anything bearing the brand name Post. Well, sir, we've been told that Lee Bulow and his gang are operating all around our territory. But so far, they haven't dared hit Mineral City. And things are pretty quiet here right now. <laughs> Not every day your bank deals in sums as big as this, eh, Mr. Pratt? It's a lot of money, Pete. Uh, $4,250. Ma and I done real well to save that much in our lifetime, considering everything. Well, we'll count it out now. Uh, 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 hard sometimes to put a uh, dollar away. Well, there were so many things we'd like to have had. But we're happy we did now. I'm uh, meeting my real estate office. We're buying us a little house and a few acres. The old Robinson place. You probably know it. Yeah. Uh, I figure what with the garden we raise and the odd jobs I can get, we'll have a real comfortable old age. In a long time coming, but it's here now. There you are. $4,250. He got me. Oh, lad. It scares me. Well, now to start us a new life. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Pratt. Peter Nicholas picks up his money and walks toward the door of the bank. His steps are slow with the weight of old age. His shoulders are stooped from long years of hard work. But his lined face radiates a light of happy hope. Nodding a friendly greeting to a man entering the bank, Pete steps outside. Almost instantly, a group of horsemen emerge from around the corner at the end of the street. Ride straight to the bank. Suddenly, Pete finds himself directly in the path of plunging hooves. The horsemen are riding the old man down. He falls. One of the men leaps from his horse, grabs Pete's money, and the gang continues on its way. <laughs> Peter Nicholas lies in the dust of the street where he has fallen, sobbing hopelessly. His money is gone. The money he and Ma put by, dollar by dollar, over 40 years' time. With it went their dream of a peaceful, unharried old age. Townspeople are running toward the bank. Among them is the sheriff. Here comes Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, and Jonah, too. Get back here. Stand aside. Let's find out what happened. Pete, are you all right? Oh, he's hurt, Roy. Here, here. Let me help you up. Them no good polecats running a man down. <laughs> Pete had just drawn out his life savings, Roy. He was on his way to the real estate office to buy that old Robinson place so that he could retire. We'll get your money back. That's a promise, Pete. How many of you men will volunteer to ride a bus? Well, 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 you'll be wasting your time. It was Lee Bulo and his gang got my money. Are you sure? Yeah, I recognized him. He'll lead his gang to their secret hideout. Nobody's ever been able to find it. Law's been trying for months, and... Sheriff, you and the posse trail Bulow direct. His hideout's located near Hard Rock somewhere. Dale and Joan and I will do some investigating over there, and maybe we'll dig out enough information to know where these rattlers hole up. Hey, let me ride with you, Roy. They might want me to be fighting. Okay, Pete. And this time we'll put an end to Bulow's gang. We'll find the hideout, or the sheriff and his posse will track them down. That's for sure. After a full day's ride, Roy, Dale, and Jonah, and the gentle old man have crossed the mountains and are entering Hard Rock, a dusty, ramshackle little town. Few strangers come here, for Hard Rock has only one business, protecting men who follow the Owl Hoot Trail, supplying them with a safe place in which to hide or celebrate. Strangers are not wanted. Who, who? 
Let's tie yeah. up here. Hey, it uh, looks like a fine souvenir shop up at the end of the street. Where? Right. Yeah, the building with the old Dutch windmill on top. Well, you'll get a souvenir there, all right. That place is the grinding wheel, one of the most notorious hangouts in the country. Well, they don't sell silver spoons and great with pictures of the town or bric-a-brac or nothing like that, do they? I'm afraid not, Jonah. Hey, wait. Stay here a minute. I don't know whether you noticed or not, but see that hombre getting off his horse up ahead? Yeah. No bric-a-brac. We passed him just before we got into town. Big disappointment. How'd he get up there, then? He must have turned around and rode for all he was worth to get ahead of us. He may be a lookout stationed to give warning when strangers come into town. Fine town, this is. He's heading for the grinding wheel, Roy. That means he is a lookout, and he's going to announce we're here. What's our next move? You and Pete head on over to the hotel. The manager's a friend of mine. Ask him to let you go up on the roof and, and watch the trails leading into town. See if we can spot Bulow's gang, huh? The minute you see any riders moving in from the mountains, let me know. Well, where'll you be? At the grinding wheel. We're going to have to bluff it through now that we're here. Jonah and I will inquire for Bulow and see what happens. Hey, the windmill on the roof started turning, Roy. I see it. I don't like the looks of things, Jonah. Me neither. Heck of a town that don't sell bricky bread. Well, let's see what kind of luck we have. Yeah. Say, these fellas in here look as if they didn't know whether it was raining or Tuesday. And what's more, I don't believe they give a what do you have. Just take the lead from me, Jonah. Uh, Roy, about a week more and I can have the book I'm writing all finished, if I live. So be careful, won't you? This is Andy Sales coming towards us. The boss, I think. He's bigger than a load of hay, ain't he? Yeah. Maybe I ought to warn you, gents, that nobody comes in here except by invitation. We're looking for a man named Bulo. Got any idea where we can find him? He ain't here. I ask where we can find him. You don't want to find him. You want to get out of here. Oh, if Dorothy May could see me now. Now go on. Start moving. Watch who you're shoving, Sales. Boy, pushing Sales hard. The man stumbles backward, grabbing for his gun. He regains his balance, faces Roy, gun in hand. Pinky, Spike. Outside, do that job. Now, Rogers, I'm going to be big-hearted. I'm going to have you taken back across the mountains. I'd advise you to go peaceable, because if there's any fuss... Sales has come up to Roy. His swarthy, leering face is close to Roy's own. If there's any fuss at all, we'll shoot to kill. Roy's fist catches Andy Seals squarely on the jaw. Then, before Seals can recover, another. And another. Seals' big body wavers, crumples to the floor. Try again, Jonah. Stand back. The first man who makes a move gets hurt. And what's more, you stay hurt. One of you men, you there. You locked the door after we came in. Now open it. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir. Time to leave here, Jonah. Yeah, hey, shoot me. For your benefit, Sales, we're staying in town till we find Bulo. Make something of it if you can. Old cat could be running a nice bric-a-brac store instead of a joint like this. Come on, get that door open. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Rogers. It, it's coming right now, sir. I'll have it. There. Come on, Jonah. Poor cat. Walk down the street toward the hotel. Well, what was you in such an all-fired hurry to get out of there for, Roy? We had him. Yeah, but before we got him, Sales sent two of his men outside. Told him to go do some job. Yeah, I heard that. That job may have been to get Dale. We know they spotted us riding into town. They might know. But... Hey. There she is, motioning for us to hurry. Convolutions. Well, trouble can happen fast here. This is Bulow's home ground. Anything goes to keep outlaws protected. There they are, Roy. The mountain trail. I see them, Dale. They're riding away, though. Maybe it ain't Bulow's gang. It is all right. When we first come up here, they was heading this direction. Yes, sir. It was just as though they'd gotten a signal, Roy. Maybe they did get a signal. From some of the rattlers Joan and I met up with. Pete, you wanted to help. Now's your chance. Just say the word, Roy. I want you to get on your horse and find the sheriff. Why? We'll be able to see you past the outskirts, and if they try to stop you, it'll be between here and there. No hurry. Good luck. Oh, he's a real nice fella, and I hope we get his money back, but we'll never do it as long as the sheriff is mixed up in things. Now, just because the sheriff is beating your time with Dorothy May, is no They're beating whose time? He just... Well, I say, there ain't nothing between Dorothy May and me except pure business. Oh, sure. Well, sure, she's typing the book I'm writing, that's all. Now, Pete's downstairs. Keep a sharp watch now. 
We can't let anything happen to him. Maybe we should have gone ourselves, Roy. Poo on the sheriff. You say poo, poo, poo. No, because as soon as Pete's on his way safe, we've got to find out how signals are sent to Bulow's gang and then send some signals ourselves inviting them to come back. That's a good idea. If we can time it right, they'll run right into the sheriff's arms. If not, we may have to handle them alone. <laughs> If you could spend a day around a ranch, like the Double R Bar, know what you'd find? The most important meal of the day is breakfast. Yes, sir, that's the meal that gets everyone up, on his toes, ready to tackle anything. And you can bet you'd find Post Sugar Crisp on the breakfast table, ready for anyone who wants a really delicious cereal treat. Mmm, that wholesome sugar and honey coated puffed wheat helps start any day off right. How folks love a great big bowl full of it with just milk or cream. No sugar needed. It's already sweet. Of course, Post Sugar Crisp is a wonderful treat to keep handy all day long because it's a perfect snack between meals, too. And you can also dig right into the package, scoop up a handful as is, and eat it like candy. No matter how you have it or when, Post Sugar Crisp is fun to eat. You try it. Get Post Sugar Crisp. In the giant or regular size package with the three little bears on the front. Roy, Dale, and Jonah wait on the roof of the hotel in Hard Rock, watching the road that leads out of town. Pete Nicholas is to travel that road alone in an effort to get out of town and locate the sheriff's posse. While Pete is gone, Roy hopes to discover how messages are sent to Bulow's gang in the mountains then set up a trap to bring them into town. But first, Pete must get away safely. There. He's out of the hotel. Yeah. Say, Roy, how long are we going to have to wait after Pete is safe before we go into action? Oh, probably about an hour. We want to have the sheriff get here ahead of Bulow, but not too far ahead. Our word might leak out. Mm. Sheriff. Pooh. Keep your mind on the business at hand. We will. Well, what did Dorothy May see in an old feller like him? Old fellow like who? The sheriff. You're bound determined to say he's beaten my time with Dorothy May, and it ain't no such. Did you find out for sure the sheriff was calling on her the night she wouldn't let you in? Well, I kind of hinted to her that it was. But instead of answering me direct, she just flicked some dust off of my lapels and smiled out there, fetch me sandwich smile, and says in her smooth voice, I tell you, Dale, when she coos at you with that smooth voice... I feel just like somebody is a rubbing my back with a handful of pussy with <laughs> Oh, Jonah. Well, go on. What did she say in her smooth voice? Yeah. Well, she says, I say, she says, Jonah, I don't believe I ever met a man as strong as you are. Oh. Say, hey, Pete's going to make it all right. Just a couple of jumps more and he hits the mountain trail, Roy. And Dorothy May was a changing the subject, you see. I say she was changing the subject. And that might work with a fat head like the sheriff, but it didn't work with me. No, sir. I investigated. Mm. Is that what you were doing when you disappeared yesterday afternoon? Yeah, yeah. I timed myself, you see. So I got to the school just before school was out. And I hid behind one of the trees in the front yard. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they come out of carrying that new camera that somebody gave Dorothy May. And they stopped right under the tree that I was hiding behind. (laughs) She'd snap his picture while he giggled. (laughs) And then he'd snap hers while she giggled. (laughs) Oh, man, I had to have the feel of iron to stay where I was that day. Well, what are you going to do about it? Anything? Well, first time I catch a sheriff without his badge, I'm going to hit him on his fat nose. Mm -hmm. But first... I'm going to beat his time and play Dorothy May along until she ain't good for nothing but to set it to winter and sigh for me. Mm. (laughs) Then I'm going to pull my fast one. What's the fast one? Well, by that time, she'll have my book typed, and I'll walk through her door, and I'll never come back. See, I'll never come back. I'll be on my way to a big town where I can cut a wide swath. Oh, Jonah, that's about that. <laughs> and then she silly. won't have nothing to do evenings except correct examination papers and buffer nails. Jonah, you're a mighty heartless man. Pete's hit the mountain trails, Roy. Yeah, I know. But we'll stay right here for an hour or so. And where we can see what goes on in town, then we'll start work in earnest. We won't go in the grinding wheel. We'll wait in the doorway next door. We understand, Roy. And nab the first man who comes out of the grinding wheel and see if we can persuade him to talk. 
Oh, by talking, you mean tell how signals are sent to Bulow's gang. That's it. Get to the cafe as soon as... Hey, hold it. What's the matter? Convolutions. Right outside, coming up to the hotel. That doorkeeper for the grinding wheel. Yes, sir, Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir. That fella? Yeah. Mm. Mr. Rogers, quick, let me in. Don't go outside. What do you want? Talk fast. I don't know if you remember me, Mr. Rogers. I worked with Mr. Sales at the cafe. Don't ever tell anybody I came here. Mr. Sales would kill me if he found it out. They got the man who was with you. Oh, no. What's that? He he sent some of his gun slicks after the fella. They they caught him on the mountain trail, brought him back to the cafe. That can't be. We was watching the whole time. They knew you was. That's why they waited until he got into the mountains. And they circled around and brought him in from the other end of town. You're lying. You're setting a trap for us. No, no. There's one chance in a thousand they have got. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All right, all right. We'll go back. But you're going with us. You'll walk through the door of the cafe the same time we do. Come on, let's go. The life of a human being is more precious than any of the world's riches. For that reason and that reason alone, Roy, Dale, and Jonah go with a fawning man who claims to be double-crossing Andy Sales. They ride up to the cafe this time. Silence greets them. Silence and the almost deserted appearance of the street. Come on. I don't like this quiet. It makes me feel hey, like... there's a couple of hombres in that doorway behind us. Say, they're posted all around us in every direction. Don't go for your gun, Rogers. Oh. It's too late for that. Yeah. You sure it's too late, Sales? Try something and see. You're surrounded. Drop your guns, belts and all, right where you are. I done my work well, didn't I, Mr. Sales? I tricked him good, real good. We've got a pretty good idea why the old fellow who was with you left. You sent him to get the law. That means you found out something. But whatever it is, you'll never tell it to the law. You won't be able to talk by the time the law arrives. Now start moving. We want you inside. Right where you are. Don't go any further. I'll close the door, Mr. Sales. I'll close the door right away. Before you do that, start the Dutch mill. Should I hang lanterns on the blades first? That the sun's going down. No. But the sun's going down. Mr. Bulo might no, not what? say it's I tell moving. You but... Nothing else. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Sales. Yes, sir. Whatever you say. So that's how Bulo and his gang get your signals. The old Dutch mill. I sure don't that it. You got smart a little too late, Rogers. We're sending for Bulo. He'll be here and take care of you within the hour. By the time the law arrives, they won't be able to find even the sign that any of you were ever here. Don't be too sure, Sales. The law moves fast sometimes, and a posse may get here before Bulow drops around. It's Bulow's gang, Dale and Jonah. It's not yes, the Yes, I know the sheriff would never make it. An old fella like him, locked up joints. Or every time he sits down, he can't get him to stand in without using a crowbar. Do you think we're done for, Roy? Mm, here they are, Bulow. Take them to hide out and get rid of them. I don't want anything further to do with this. Yeah, it's been a long time since we met face to face, Bulow. And we won't stop to talk over old times. Get up and start walking toward your horses. Sure, but uh, from what I've overheard, I understand we have a chance to see your hideout. Now that depends. We may kill you on the way. That'd be a shame if you did. We've been sort of counting on seeing the hideout. Within minutes, Roy, Teal, and Jonah are on their horses, riding under guard in the mountain area outside Hard Rock. They travel slowly, for the sun has set. The narrow trail twists and winds around a steep precipice. They enter wild country, completely uninhabited, probably uncharted as well. Four members of the gang ride ahead to break the trail. Then Roy, then Dale, then Jonah. Finally, the remainder of the gang. Roy wonders if their silence is not a bad sign. Hey, Jonah, the moon's getting behind the cloud. When it gets all the way behind, I'll drop off a trigger. You follow my example and pass word back to Dale to do the same. Jonah does as he's told. All three know the danger. Once off the horses, the only possible route of escape was a drop over the side of the cliff. Roy glances back at Jonah, slides from the saddle. Jonah follows suit. 
Then Dale. Ooh, turn around, Trigger. Go back. Head for home. Rush him off the trail. Head for home, Trigger. Jump and hope we make it, Dale and Jonah. Roy, Dale, and Jonah wait only to see Trigger charging back through the line of startled outlaws and make the perilous jump. Hooves fly, horses squeal, men shout. As horses and riders plunge over the cliff, Roy, Dale, and Jonah jump. Dale, Jonah, are you all right? I made it, Roy. I think I'm alive, but they know what we're up to. We've got to get guns. Guns? How? The outlaws trigger pushed off of the trail have guns. We'll take them. Well, we've got guns now. You bet. What happened to Bulo? Well, he and the three men who rode ahead of us on the trail must have gone on ahead. But Bulow was the man we wanted most. As long as we've got those others tied up down below, we have a good chance of taking Bulow, too. Hey, listen. That's Bullet. What a situation. Here, Bullet. This way, fella. Come on, fella. Roy. Roy Rogers. The sheriff. Ah, poo. The giggling goon got lost again. Hey, good boy, Bullet. Good boy. Bullet ran on. Back, Roy. You're just in time, Sheriff. Have part of your posse go over the side of the cliff and get those men down there. Bulo's going on ahead. We'll put Bullet on his trail and take him. Partner, nobody's going to have to ride herd on you to eat breakfast. No siree. Once you try new, improved post toasties, the heap good cornflakes, you'll get up and go for them, because you're heading for the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Mmm, flakes of sweet kernel flavor, crackling fresh. They won't mush up in milk. Post toasties, heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Say, big Indians, little Indians, everybody's wild about those fresh tasting post toasties. And with sugar and cream, they're heap good nourishment, too. Tomorrow, head straight as an arrow for your favorite grocers and ask for new, improved post toasties. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. You better follow the example of your men, Bulo, and come on out while you're still able to walk. Come and get me! Come on! Hold it, Sheriff. I can see him inside the cabin from here. I'll bring him out. Want another gun, Roy? No, this one's fine. There goes the pole catch hat. Run a board right in front of his nose. Now, hold your fire. Hold it. Now, come on. Well, make it quick. We'll take these four on in, Sheriff. You'd better take your posse and head on over to Hard Rock and clean house there. Roy, man, I know we can't ever repay you for getting our money back, but we had a little talk and decided you ought to have this as a sort of a memento to show you we do appreciate what you've done. What is it, Pete? Uh, a ring. Friendship ring, sort of. I gave more when we was first engaged. Couldn't afford nothing better, or the Lord knows she deserved it. He thought if you can't use it, Roy... Maybe Dale could. And you could see it on her finger. Oh, Pete. Pete, I'll tell you what. We'll accept this ring with thanks from the bottom of our hearts. And now we're giving it back to you so you can put it on Ma's finger again as a sign of our friendship and love for you, too. Yeah, I... Thank you, Roy. I... Well, Rick. Where is that what? sniveling, sneaking, obnoxious, disreputable? Oh, <laughs> there you are. Uh, who, me? Yes, you. What were you doing hiding behind a tree in the schoolyard oh, the other afternoon? Hiding behind a tree in the schoolyard. Now, let me think. Don't lie. 
<laughs> Don't try to wiggle out of it. I've got proof that would stand up in any court of the land. Look at this. Whoa, Look at it. Take it easy. Yeah. Thirty-two <laughs> pictures and your ugly mug sticking out from around that tree in every last one of them. You ruined the whole roll of film. Well, well, now, at least she's here. Well, yeah, now, here's you and me. Here's Dorothy May and me. Yeah, oh, yes, I remember the silly giggle you did when you was taking this one. No, don't remember And any after such... this one, you kind of stroked your hand, sly-like, when you handed the camera back. I did not. You did, too, and you're a polecat for doing it. Oh. Now, take off your coat. I'll take it. Hey. Dorothy May's mine, and I'm protecting her from such as you. Take do. off oh, your anyway. coat, I say. Take, take off your coat. I think we ought to get out of here. So do I. It's the noisy a person can't hear himself think. Besides, it looks as though these two young boys have a problem they want to settle. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again, happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed. Directed by Tom Hargis. Script by Ray Wilson. Music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Tim Graham, Earl Lee, and Leo Curley. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails.